So we're continuing speaking about mechanical uh, material properties and quantities. And that leads us to the property called the Poisson's ratio. Which is denoted in this uh, Greek symbol, which is kind of like a V, just like that. And basically what the Poisson's ratio uh, is telling us is when we, let's say we have a real material block, okay, I'm drawing it 2D. When we pull on this thing, or we apply a pressure, as we know, or a stress, what basically happens is that obviously it gets longer, right? So we, we get, it gets longer. But also it's skinnier. So we started out with something like this. And we ended up with something like this. So it, it got skinnier. Basically it extended in the x direction, it extended and in the y direction, it shrunk. And this happens because of two reasons. The first reason is volume conservation. See, when we get longer in this direction, it gets bigger in this direction, right? So the material tends to want to conserve its volume, so therefore it has to shrink in this direction. So that's one explanation and one contribution uh, toward this extension and shrinkage. And uh, to define the Poisson's ratio you know, mathematically, uh, we define it as the axial strain, so how much we pulled on it, axial or and how much it shrunk in the transverse direction or when we had these xy coordinates and so we call this y and x we could say this the strain and going back to my uh, let's write that again so we have the strain in the x direction or either, sorry in the y direction over the strain in the x direction so always the Poisson's ratio is going to be less than 1 it's typically like 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 for rubber, and this is maybe a ceramic material. Uh, so obviously, knowing that this is 0 0.5, uh, we know that it's going to be extending more in the direction we're pulling in. So we're pulling in the x-direction again. Or pulling in the x-direction. It's going to be extending more in the x-direction than it's shrinking. So it's not completely conserving this volume. But it's somewhat doing that. So let's talk more about this uh, this expression I drew here. We have a negative sign because when we're pulling on it in the uh, when, when we're pulling on it in the x direction, it's going to be extending. So this is going to be a positive number. This is a positive number, but we'll, but it's going to be shrinking in the other direction. So this is going to be a negative strain. So therefore, we get a positive number out of it. So this is the kind of reasoning behind uh, that negative sign there. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the other reason why the Poisson's ratio uh, you know, exists. And I, I mentioned one is volume conservation. And the second one is, you could say, the uh, you could say the spring effect. I was going to dub my own term, spring effect. So if we draw, uh, you know, the microscopic picture, you know, simplified microscopic picture of the material system, we would see that, okay, we got atoms. And they're connected through bonds, right? So we have bonding going on here. And we'll draw them as springs. So they're connected through some elastic energy. So if I ask you, what's the Poisson's ratio of this material when I pull this way? When I, when I pull on the material that way, what is the Poisson's ratio? Actually, in this case, it would be zero. V would be equal to zero, or Poisson's ratio would equal to zero. Why is that? Because when you're pulling on it, if you see you pull this way, these springs 
will get longer. But these springs over here will all stay the same length. Therefore, uh, when we have, as we define the Poisson's ratio, uh, again, the coordinates is x and y. When we pull it in the x direction, this top part, or sorry, this is y, this is x, this is 0, and this is whatever number we got, whatever whole number we should pull, which that equals uh, 0. So we don't have any coupling. So this actually, this diagram itself does not explain it. But we have to remember one other thing, that there's different types of bonding going on. There's only, not only bonding with the closest atom. And obviously this is a simplified picture, I'm just using it to help uh, get the point across. There's actually bonding going on between these, these atoms as well. And I'll, let me just draw that in a four atom, you know, material. So we have one atom here, one atom here, one atom here, one atom here. And we have bonds in between them. And I mentioned there are also bonds occurring in between atoms. So let's say like that, and like this. So there's bonds going on between these two atoms as well, although they're not close to each other, uh, relatively. So basically what happens now is that if you stretch this whole thing, we're gonna, it's going to be wanting to compress these springs as well. These springs are going to kind of want to bring it down because they don't want to stretch. They want to stretch as uh, low as possible. So if we had this box and pretend each of these corners has an atom on it, and we have this vector going from here to here. Now this is just spring right here. Let's call it K1. This is K1, okay? When we pull on this box, we get a wider K. We, go, we get this, right? So K1, obviously this direction, uh, we have a displacement one. Uh, it basically increases obviously in that direction. But it, the spring doesn't want to extend, right? The, it, you don't, the system doesn't want to get any more energy uh, in it than it has to. Uh, so basically what happens, instead of this going up, this will actually decrease the size. So the size of the, um, of the material will also decrease. Well, not this much. But the size will decrease, and then we will get a smaller, uh, basically a smaller displacement from this atom to this one. So it'll basically look like this instead. Get different color. How about like that? Okay. Instead of this. So we can have this red arrow going here. And that's what it doesn't want to do because it doesn't want to extend as, it just extends as low as possible. And this is the green one, which actually happens. And this green arrow is the reason why this is not equal to zero because there's a coupling which happens in between these atoms. So the explanation again of Poisson's ratio is the first volume conservation. And two, the spring, you can see the spring effect. So, and depending on how materials are arranged in their crystal structure or their microscopic microscopic structure, they'll have different Poisson's ratio and different material properties in different directions. And we'll go over that next. So, the next topic is isotropic or anisotropic properties of materials.